Martin Delaney finally gave up on America. Admitted to Harvard Medical School with letters of support from 17 doctors, Delaney took one full term of lectures, then told to leave. Fifteen sons of wealthy families who paid the salaries of the faculty wrote that they would make other arrangements if that wasn't done, and the faculty caved. His expulsion, just because of skin color, convinced him that the power of reason and merit alone did not in fact determine the country's esteemed leaders. So, scraping together just a few hundred dollars, he rented a crew and ship to go back to Africa, where his grandfather Shango had returned generations before. I sailed from New York May 24, 1859 in the fine bark Mendy with Captain McIntyre, vessel and cargo owned by Johnson, Turpin, and Dunbar, three enterprising colored gentlemen of Monrovia, Liberia, all formerly of New York City. His critics, including Frederick Douglass, were legion. You must stay here and fight for freedom, they told him. Farewell to the land of the bloodhound and chain. My path is away over the fetterless main. Martin had 46 days in the mid-Atlantic to penetrate his personal distant horizons from his own 46 years of non-stop living. Beginning that one day on a street in Charlestown, Virginia, when his mother Patty accepted from a big-hearted traveling peddler the key that would unlock everything for the Delaney's, the New York primer for spelling and reading. Martin listened intently as his four older brothers and sisters lay out the secret to how to arrange a word and the sound you make with each word and caring not a fig that it was all illegal. If you were darker skinned, they didn't care. It was fun, and it was power. Patty packed all they could into a wagon, saying it was a trip to Ken and Martinsburg, but which continued on north across the ferry at Williamsport, Maryland, and continuing further north into Pennsylvania, a free state and Chambersburg, the promised land of knowledge that replaced the hell of knowledge. From that day forth, Martin read, learned, grew, acted. The longer his legs, the vaster he could stride the face of the globe. The longer his arms, the furthest star he could hold in his hand, sometimes scorched and sometimes illumined. Until a day in 1875, he reached for a star within another universe of stars, 
fiery anger blasted back and Martin fell back forevermore into our every day with just a sun and a moon. His hope wanted something perfect that humanity, the part he met, scorned.